my sound is not working. So Richard will work on that. <laughs> so glad to have you all here as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Just as an aside, uh, that little prelude that Richard just played was an original composition by him. Okay? Nope. I got all the bars on the battery. <laughs> can hear it from the reception. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Nope. That part works, but. Ah. as we give thanks for our baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water and life. Amen. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eve's burdened rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the blood pits of your reconciling love free us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through Jesus Christ, our source of living water, in the holy name of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia.
God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. the immense religious and social boundary that separates Jews from Gentiles in order to proclaim the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, so that God's forgiveness in Jesus' name would reach out to all the people. The first reading is from Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went from doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of wisdom, word of life. Thank you, Jesus, God. Give thanks to 
to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you for you have answered me and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. of the Christian faith and Paul's preaching is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As the crucified and risen Christ appeared the earliest of his follow to his, the earliest of his followers, so we experience the presence of the risen one in the preaching of this faith. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, though which you also, which also you are being saved, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as the first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared in Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. <clears throat> then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of wisdom, word of life. Jesus loved and said to them, 
They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the, with the linen wrappings, but rolled up into a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and he believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she went, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but he did not, she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what, that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Jürgen Moltmann was a prominent 20th century German theologian who actually will soon be 98 years old. He famously wrote that without women preachers, we would have no knowledge of the resurrection. <laughs> you laugh, but it's true. All the Gospels report that it was the women who arrived at the tomb to anoint Jesus' body with oils because they could not do it on the Sabbath. In all but Mark, which ends very strangely and abruptly, the women went back to tell the men that their Lord had risen. They were the first to tell the story, but the men didn't do anything about it. The disciples went upstairs to that room and locked themselves in. In John's account that we just heard, Peter and the other disciple just went home afterwards after they had heard this amazing news. But the women went back proclaiming the good news. Everything that Jesus had told them would happen had indeed happened. On Facebook, there was an announcement that in keeping, in keeping with biblical history, only the women were invited to the sunrise service. <laughs> we forget that there were always women amongst Jesus' disciples even though they were rarely named. Yes, I'm sure they did some of the very traditional women's tasks of feeding the men and making sure they had what they needed to be as comfortable as possible. But Jesus appeared to the women first because the women were the ones who showed up and discovered the empty tomb. The men saw the empty tomb, but the risen Lord did not appear to them at that moment. He appeared when the women showed up. Mary did not recognize him until he spoke her name. When she heard his voice, she knew who he was. We know the voices of the people we love. Though my mom used to say that three out of four of my brothers had to say more than hello on the phone before she knew which one it was, their voices were very alike. But we know the voices of the people dearest to us without caller ID, which most of us did not grow up with. 
My mom has been dead nearly 37 years, but I can still hear her voice when I think of it. I'm sure that the resurrection, resurrected Lord did not look exactly as he did when he was walking on the earth. But when he spoke Mary's name, his voice was the same. It was the voice that they had been listening to for over three years as he proclaimed the good news. And in all of the inter intimate conversations they no doubt had, Mary, teacher, I love the worship of Holy Week because I know that Sunday is coming, that Saturday, that Friday is not the last word. The regal drama of, of Jesus' final procession in Jerusalem, the intimate night spent with the disciples on Thursday when he washed their feet and gave them a new commandment to love one another and share the meal that has been shared at the altar ever since. The pain of the crucifixion is real, but all the while, we know that Sunday is coming. Life will win out over death. I think that Jesus' death had to happen at the hands of bloodthirsty men to show the worst of humanity. God allowed the execution to take place to show the worst of the human heart. God allowed that execution to take place to show us how sinful and broken we are, demanding Jesus' blood because they were so afraid of him. The Roman Empire was afraid of what would happen if they did crucify Jesus, and the chief priests and the scribes were afraid of what would happen if they did not crucify Jesus. They were afraid of losing their power over the masses. Do not ever underestimate the power of human cruelty. Do not underestimate the need to have power over others, the need to feel in control, the need to feel better than those beneath us, the need to retain wealth and stature, the need to keep acquiring more money than they will ever use in multiple lifetimes just to have more. It will always be part of the brokenness of sin that systems keep poor people poor and marginalized people marginalized. Sin keeps wanting people to be the dominant culture that rises above all those who do not fit our standards. Sin breeds hatred and killing of those who are the other, those who are different and don't fit my standards. But God brought life out of that gruesome, vicious murder of Jesus. When people are hung on the cross, they die because their body can no longer support itself and the rib cage falls and so all the breath is squeezed out. They suffocate to death. It takes time and it is agonizing. It is the worst possible kind of death. As people watched Jesus die, they gawked at him and taunted him for hours. Three hours, we, that's what it says, maybe more taunted him while he died. God let the people show themselves at their worst murderous selves. But that was Friday, and this is Sunday. Jesus was in that tomb for barely three days, and then came Sunday when the stone was rolled away, and Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. There's a little known story that does not appear in scriptures. Pontius Pilate said to Joseph of Arimathea, Joseph, I really don't understand. You're one of the wealthiest men in the region, and you spent a fortune on that new tomb for you and your family, and you want to give it to this man Jesus? Joseph responded, it's just for the weekend. <laughs> the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the great cosmic joke. When we all thought death was the final word, God said, nope. When we think we can destroy life with death, God says, no. I am more powerful than any evil that any human can do. I am life itself. Do you understand this fully, completely? No. No human mind can ever grasp this miracle of life over death. 
We never understand the greatest mystery of all times. Unbelievers look at us and think we are absolutely crazy. And it is, and we are, unless we have experienced that relationship with the risen Lord, however fleeting it is at times, moments of great intimacy, moments of deep and abiding hope, moments when we re realize that the grace of God has washed us in his love, moments when we see him out of the corner of our eye, moments when we see Jesus, the resurrected Lord, in one another. It is crazy. We, what we do here every single Sunday is foolish folly to those who have not tasted new life in a bite of street taco and a tiny taste of bad wine or juice. This is not common sense. It sounds absolutely ridiculous without the relationship with our loving God that we have experienced. Jesus' death was meaningless until Sunday morning when the tomb was open and he came to Mary and simply said, Mary, life wins out over death. Without the death and resurrection of Jesus, there would be no Christianity. Without that resurrection, the disciples would have faded off and gone to nothing. But they did experience it. And they told the story. And the story has continued on for 21 centuries. And no matter what's happening in the church, no matter we're small or whatever's going on, the church will live on because this is the church of the risen Lord. And we live in that hope every minute. We do, we have dark, despairing moments in our lives. One times we feel like we're going to be beaten down for good, and then, and then we hear that voice. We, we see that love in another's eyes. We feel the touch of someone who loves us. We hear the word of hope again, and we can get back up, and we can keep going. We just keep going because we live in that hope. We live in the newness of life. We live as resurrection people. And nothing can stop us from that. Because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank mm -hmm.
rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protected, where the church is privileged, granted humility, where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace, hear our prayer. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. God of grace. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith, especially those who long for health and healing. Among ourselves, we pray for Wendy Rubio and her family on the death of her beloved grandfather earlier this week. Comfort the family during this time of sorrow. We pray also for David Witt, Mike Hornbeck, Diane Kyle, Ryan Graver, Judy Mello, Nancy Sims, Nancy Sampson, Janet Sims, and all on the prayer wall. For whom else do you pray? We pray your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And I encourage you to heartily share the peace of Christ with one another.
Risen One, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witness in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Amen. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. You may be seated. of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Receive God's blessing. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. Hallelujah! The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope, bless you now and always. Amen.
Peace.